What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to Camps on Demand. My name is Connor, and welcome to part one of your upper body foundations within our tutorial series, a series of videos that break down some of the primary movements, especially the foundational movements you're gonna see in a whole variety of different workouts with us, with other individuals that you partake in. Now for today, all you really need to know is that everything's gonna be body weight, except for one point, I'm gonna give you the option to grab a chair or a bench or something with a variety to go through a progression of one of our movements. We got three movements we're gonna break down. The plank, the push-up, and the dip. Once we break those down, we're gonna go ahead and show you a couple variations of them. Other than that, every single one of our workouts comes with a curated playlist that you have the option to check on out. That's in the details section. I'm gonna get mine started. I got mine jamming in my ear. If you wanna get it started, we're gonna get it started all together. You got about five seconds in three, two, one. Welcome to the workout. Let's do this thing. So, very first move with the plank. We're gonna break it down piece by piece, three minutes, at a time. Go ahead, lay down flat, both feet down on the ground. Let's talk about core engagement for this. Take one hand, place it underneath the low back. You may feel pressure on that hand immediately, may have a little bit of a curvature. That's natural. The lumbar spine has a little flexion. What we want to do, take the navel, pull it into the spine, press down into that hand, release. This is called imprinting. You want to imprint, press into the hand, Release. I can take my hand out and still imprint down, low back into the mat, bring it up. We're entering into the plank, so we want to focus on core engagement. It's going to be something here over and over again. Now, as I'm quote unquote imprinting, my pelvis is tipping back. I'm tucking my pelvis almost like it's rotating like a pelvic thrust. Go ahead, hold in three, two, and one, hold here. I want you to feel that tension building in the abdominal wall and your rectus abdominis here. We're gonna hold this tension as I turn you over in three, two, and in one. Turn on over. Find me. Shoulders over the palms. From here, tuck that pelvis again. I'm not rounding or arching, but I'm just pulling in like I did on the floor. Now, can we go ahead and walk ourselves back out so our knees are on the ground? Finding a straight line head to knees. This is the start of our plank. Anytime you're in a plank, you think straight line head down to point of contact with the floor. From this position, can you hold your finger pads and press them into the ground instead of resting on the wrists, we're pressing away. So my first knuckles are almost turning white because I'm gripping the ground like I got suction cups. My upper back is pressed away, and of course, my pelvis is tucked, core engaged. Now to make this a little bit more advanced, we got two options. Number one, we can go into one toe. Now instead of having a straight line head to my knees, I have a straight line head to toe. Even more challenging, I can go up on both toes. Here is where we get an opportunity to see what can go wrong, what can happen. It's very easy when we get to this position, the hips want to dip. So I think instead of dipping the hips, find that flat line, press through the palms, grip the ground, and hold. Now you can go through whatever option you like from the bottom. Again, both knees, one toe, or both toes. No matter what your option, I want you to think about that flat line and two more things. Take the glutes, squeeze them tight together like you have a penny and you don't want it to drop between. Number two, squeeze your quads. You think about it in succession. Quads, glutes, abs, all three tight. You got about five seconds, we're done with our first plank. You got three, you got two, you got one. Bring it down to the knees. That's the general progression of the plank. Those are main things you're gonna to wanna to focus on. Movement number two, we have the push-up. Let's find that same position as we had before. Shoulders over the palms, straight line head to knees. As you hold this position, I'm going to show you the end goal of what we're doing. End goal with the push-up is saying, I'll show you from a little bit of an angle. Elbows go out and away, we lower the chest to the floor, we press back up tall to about a 90% extension. That means I'm not locking the elbows, but I'm coming close. Five seconds away, I'm going to have everybody just find themselves in that flat plank position in three, in two, and in one, find that flat plank position. If you need to stay down on the knees, by all means. I just want you to find again, oh wait, the push-up's a plank? The plank's a push-up? Exactly. A push-up is essentially just a moving hand plank. You got about five seconds holding this position. I'm gonna bring everybody back down to the knees in three, two, and one, back onto the knees. This first progression of us going into a push-up is just us lowering to the ground. So how slow can you lower? As slow as you can, you're just fighting gravity. Just fight it, fight it, fight it when you get to the bottom. 
Drop out, shake out your arms, push back, come up. So this is called a negative. We're just controlling the negative motion the way down. So what happens to allow us to do this? Oh, we have elbows send out and away, like they're trying to go back and out at about 45 degrees. We shake it out at the bottom. Now we're gonna switch this up in three, two, one. Stay down on the ground. You can have your feet completely flat. I'll show you again from an angle. All we do from here, push up. Drop down on the ground, shake it up. Ready? Hands are just about at the level of the chest. Thumbs in line with the middle of the chest. Elbows out, I push up. Drop it back down. You can start this out on the knees, push up, or you can go right to the toes. In three, in two, and in one. Everybody back on the knees, shake it out. This is where we're gonna put it all together. Find that straight line head to knees. Instead of just lowering, instead of just pressing, we do it together. In three, two, and in one. Send the elbows out away, lower down slow, press up tall. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, just like we built up with our plank, one toe down, one knee down. Even more of a challenge, both toes down. What do we say at the end of our plank? We want to avoid dropping the hips. We want to avoid raising the hips. So control that flat line. This is the most challenging, a little less, a little less. Final piece of advice I have for you, every time you get to the top, avoid locking the elbows, but come to a soft like 95% extension. It's close, but not all the way. You got four, three, two, one. Go ahead and shake it on out. We went through the plank, went through the push-up, which is again, essentially just a moving plank. Now, coming into the dips, everything from this point forward, back of the body. So, triceps, two-thirds of the upper arm. We're gonna spend some time on it. First thing first, let's get the positioning down. We'll start out on the ground, but we'll elevate to the bench later. Hands down so my fingers face forward. Imagine your thumb in contact with your bum. It's a good kind of memory tool. I lean back slightly, heels down, I raise up. So I'm just kind of hovering above the ground. So again, thumb to bum, fingers face the toes, I raise up. Just hold this position. Now, even just holding this may be a difficulty, but you're thinking, shoulders open, chest tall. If we start rolling forward, it's bad on the shoulders, so open it up. Eyes can be up at about an angle. Imagine you're looking at where the corner of the ceiling meets the corner of the wall. In three, we're gonna go to an actual dip in two, and in one, drop down, press up. Drop down, press up. Notice how small of a range it is when we're on the floor. That's not a bad thing, we just need to make sure we maintain tension. How? We don't lock out at the top. We don't rest at the bottom. So I tap my glutes, barely press up. Notice, 95% extension, 100. That's that little bit of a difference right there. So tap it, raise it, tap it, raise it. Now if I want to challenge, one foot up. Ooh, a little bit more gravity working down in the middle of my body and my pelvis, a little bit more challenge. Even more, both out. But remember, if I start rounding forward by extending my legs, I lose the motion, so make sure chest tall, elbows back. You got five, you're walking back in, you got four, you got three, two, one. Now you can continue going through this motion and listen to me, or you can grab a bench, it was high knots. Take that bench, place it at your side. Same setup, thumbs touch the bum, I scoot off the edge, my fingers face forward towards my toes, but they wrap the bench. Now, from this 90 degree position between my hips, knees, and ankles, I lower my hips straight down, raise up. This adds a couple extra dimensions. We talk about depth. Before, it was one way or another we were hitting the floor. Here, we go down close to 90 degrees where my upper arms are parallel with the floor. Now, same thing, you can make it more challenging with one or both feet out, but we avoid letting the hips go away from the bench. Because again, look at my shoulders putting stress by leaning forward. I want to stay open, and I want to stay about grazing the edge. You got 10 seconds. Oof. You got six, five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead, shake up the arms. You can take that bench, put it back off to the side. We are done with that. Just a quick show of a progression. Now, every single movement we're gonna go through is gonna be a modification of those three we just learned. The plank, the push-up, the dip, find me back down on the ground. First modification, we did a hand plank all the way through. 
What does that mean? Just mean shoulders over the palms. Now, the most common modification you're going to see, the most common variation, forearms down. Just find me here. Basic hold. Shoulders over the elbows. Forearms on the ground. Your palms face in or face down. Now, remember your regressions. One toe up. First progression. Both toes up. Second progression. Now, if you want to make this more interesting, we can rock forward and back. But no matter what your option is, where are the hips not doing? They're not raising. They're not lowering. To put stress on the low back. We're just holding that navel. Pull it into the spine. Remember our imprinting, that same idea. Tuck the pelvis. Squeeze the glutes. Yeah, three, two. The second most common variation. Right forearm down on the ground. Right knee down on the ground, left leg stacked. Push the left hip up. This is called a right side plank. So, if you can see me, I try to aim to have a straight line from my top fingers down through my bottom elbow. My forearm perpendicular to my torso. From my nose all the way to my toes, I've got a flat line. Now the second, almost more important point is that my shoulder doesn't come towards my ear. I don't collapse into it. I press away. I stay neutral and open above my shoulder joint. You got three, two, and I want to turn it on over. Opposite side, bottom knee down, top leg extended, top arm over the elbow. Straight line, finger through the elbow. What's my forearm doing? Perpendicular to my torso. What does my body line look like from nose to toes? Not bowing like a banana, hips stacked over, straight line. Yeah, five. Keep the shoulder way forward. Three, two, and one. Two of your most common variations. The forearm plank and the side plank. Going next into the push-ups. I'll show you again, about 45 degrees. This push-up, instead of having shoulders directly over the palms, palms wider than shoulder width, wide push-up. Join me when you're ready. Elbows go out and away. How do they go? About 45 degrees back. By widening out our position, we're enabling ourselves to activate the pecs a little bit more. You're like, wait, I thought that's what we were already doing. When we bring it a little closer, we're going to emphasize more of the shoulders and the triceps, but that's coming up next. You got 10 seconds. You can be on both knees, flat line. One toe, flat line. Both toes, no surprise, flat line. You got five. You got four. You got three. You've also got a soft bend. You're not locking out. You got two. You got one. Bring it on down. Shake it on out. Wide push up. We just extended the hand position. Now, narrow push up. Difference with this one, I'll show you from the front. I'm on my knees, straight line, head to heels. Instead of having my hand shoulder width, my elbows going slightly outward for a regular push up, I tuck them in so my elbows graze my sides on the way up and down. The difference between our elbow positioning indicates what muscle groups are going to be targeted most. By bringing the elbows in tight, I've started to activate my triceps a little bit greater. I've started to activate the front of my shoulder, my anterior delt, a little bit greater. You got about 10 seconds. Three things you think. Is my back flat? Is my core engaged? Are my elbows grazing my sides? You got five, four, three, two. Welcome to the last two minutes of your entire tutorial. Going into our dips, two variations. Number one, we've got negatives. It's going to feel a little less climactic when we're on the ground as opposed to being on the bench, but I'm going to show you anyways. Find that same position we had before. Negatives are again controlling the motion as gravity works against us. Now that's a general movement, period, but it's all about going with gravity as slow as we can. So gravity's pushing us down, so let's lower with it as slow as we can. Really slow, tap the bottom, press it up. So think like three seconds. Notice I'm going like an inch at a time, back up. Slow, 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 up. Negatives, also called eccentric motions, all about with gravity, but fighting its urge just to throw us down. You got 10 seconds. If you can see me from the front, my thumbs in line with my bum, my fingers, face forward towards my toes, press up. Again, this would be more drawn out, more drastic if we had that elevated bench position. But here, same thing, just smaller range of motion. Maybe we go one inch a second, instead of four inches a second with a bench. You got three. 
two, shake it out. This is the end. All you have to focus on is holding halfway down. About an inch before we touch the ground and we hold it at the bottom. Remember, this is it in three, two, and one hold. It's called isometric holds. You got three of them, each are 10 seconds. You got four, three, two, one, drop shake. Next one comes in four, three, halfway down. Feel that tension in the back of the arm in two, and in one, down. What do we avoid? Rounding forward, keep the chest tall. What do we avoid? Head dropping, keep the eyes to the corner of the room. You got three, two, one, shake it on out. One last one in four, three, two, one. You got the last eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Drop it down, shake it on out. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your first part of the two-part series of upper body foundations, all body weight, plank, push-up, dip, and modifications and variations that you can do with each one of those. If you have any questions, always, always, always reach out to us, but check the rest of the tutorial series. My name is Connor. Have a wonderful day. Adios.